I'm a lonely Goomba, stuck between two pipes. Well, guess I keep on gaming for the rest of my life. There are only two certainties in life. Death, which is a bit of a downer, and Nintendo floating hand bosses. That's right, it's happening, it's time for the top 10 Nintendo floating hand bosses video. Oh man, there's so many of these things. Seriously, it's like someone working at Nintendo has an unhealthy obsession with hands or something. It's like they can't wait to just slip it in there every single chance they get. But hey, whatever floats your boat, we don't judge people here. And well, I hope you're ready to listen to 15 minutes of a Goomba talking about hands, cause here we go, let's jump right in this thing. Oh and uh, spoiler warning just in case you care, but most of these are gonna be final bosses, you know, so uh, don't say I didn't warn you. Ah, uh, number 10 is... Tiki Tong. So, you've just made it through the masterpiece that is Donkey Kong Country Returns. And it's time for the final boss, but hold up a minute. What the heck's going on here? Phil shoves bananas in his head, spins around, spits out a bunch of goop, and then it explodes into some hands. Damn, son. I mean, with an entrance like that, how could it not be on the list? Phil's got all the classic floating hand attacks. He's slamming, he's sliding, he's bushing, he's crushing. He's doing it all. Only downside is, um, his hands just don't last that long. A few hits, and he's just a floating head boss, and that ain't no good. Mixed in with his generic underwhelming design, and uh, it only just squibs by at number 10. And number 9 is... Castle Bowser. So, you're playing Mario Wonder, and you're getting near the end of the game, but you're getting nervous about the final boss. I mean, all the other bosses have been a bit crap, so you've got low expectations. And then, blammo! The game pours out a floating hand boss on a musical stage, and suddenly, all your worries are just lifted away. And well, for a 2D Mario boss, this is pretty unique. So you gotta jump to the music to smack Bowser's ugly mug. And just when you think you've got it figured out, a third hand shows up. And then, when you think it's safe to sleep at night, you guessed it, four hands. Four floating hands at once. That's what you call a floating hand boss. Number eight is Wham Bam Rock. You ever wondered why it's called the Great Cave Offensive? I mean, have you seen Wham Bam Rock's original design? Pretty offensive, dude. I'm about to cancel Nintendo over a 30 year old game over here. But it changed the design in the DS remake and uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool boss. I feel like this is the prototype of Master Hand actually. It even shares some moves like the little walking attack. But it does have a few unique twists too. Like, he snaps his fingers and it's raining boulders. Don't think my umbrella is going to help me against that. I I'm not going to lie. A new to Superstar Orchard is Wham Bam Jewel. A buffed up version with some added bling. It's mostly the same, but now it's dropping these bombs and shooting lasers from its fingers. I mean, can your fingers do that? Yeah, that's what I thought. This boss really has it all. Well, as long as it involves hands. Number 7 is Bodegeist. Now, 3D Mario has an absolute surplus of floating and bosses, but one of them rises above the rest, Bodegeist. And the twist is, it doesn't even have floating ants. I know, right? I mean, what is this? A list about floating ants, and it doesn't even have any. I want a refund. But, hold up, because just when you think you've won, a cutscene plays, and here's the hand. And straight into a punch to the face, it means business. But this is a really tense boss. The setting, the music, the attacks, it's pretty hype actually. And the way you damage him is insanely satisfying too. Uh, grabbing a bamboo and just swinging it around and smacking it into his face never gets old. Well, uh, as long as he doesn't block them with his hands. And as if things couldn't get even more tense, the game has a one-hit kill daredevil run on this boss. Now you really gotta be careful. He'll even try to trap you between these rocks in order to get the killing blow. I've gotta hand it to Nintendo. This is probably one of the most memorable 3D Mario bosses to me. Talking about memorable things, it's time for today's sponsor. It's Factor 75. And you know what that means, right? Time to put on my chef outfit once more. Let's go. 
See, fact is 75. Deliver prepared meals right to your door. You ain't got to worry about meal planning, prep, or even cleaning up. Bruh, just shove them in the microwave, and you got a high quality meal in minutes. You can just switch your brain off and not have to worry about what to make every single meal. We even offer meals for all sorts vegans, vegetarians, and heck, even keto diets. It's all on the website, and it's easy to navigate. You can find exactly what you need. We got bitches too, so, um, have a look. It's, um, making me hungry actually and since these meals are quick and healthy that gives you more time to focus on the things that truly matter like playing video games grab a prepared smoothie for a quick snack or have a chef quality meal in two minutes the choice is yours barely any cleanup either i mean eat it right from a tray if you want i won't judge i've managed to cram in a few more hours gaming a day because of these it's been great i mean it beats eating a ton of takeout eating that greasy pizza you can feel the years being taken off your life with each bite so swap it out with a factor 75 meal and have something healthy and tasty i mean come on now you'll thank me later i mean since i've started using them i feel like a whole new man uh, mushroom. I mean, look at me. I'm the pinnacle of health. Pretty sure that's a six pack coming in, actually. Huh. I didn't even know Goombas could get those. So, get 50% off your first factor box and three wellness shots for life using my link. That means you can choose two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you're an active subscriber. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. I'll check it out. Right, so, um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Back to talking about hands. And number six is a bongo bongo. Now on paper, this boss sounds kinda cute. You're on a giant bongo drum, and there's some big old hands slapping to the rhythm, and you're bouncing around. I mean, even this name's a bit silly. Bongo bongo. I mean, that sounds kinda silly to me. But in practice, it's pretty bleeding disturbing, actually. I mean, look at this thing. What the heck? is that it's like a hanging corpse with his neck split open and his hand sliced off it's some demonic donkey conga going on over here and what's worse is you can't even see the damn thing without the lens of truth i mean for all you know bongo bongo is in your room right now just chilling in the corner and you wouldn't even know i um I think I just scared myself, actually. So anyway, you need to stun both his hands, then his neck slice thing opens up, revealing a big red eye, and then you've got to beat the crap out of it. And heck, even the noises this thing makes is creepy. Look, even this death animation's freaking me out. I mean, look at it. It's just creepy, all right? It's just creepy. Wait. Did... Did you hear that? Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, God. It's getting closer. Uh, number five is... DJ Octavio. Now this guy shows up in every Splatoon game. And all three of them are floating and bosses. But Splatoon 1 still has the best fight if you ask me. It's just a bit of a gauntlet really. See, you've got to reflect his hands back into him. And each time he does, he moves back, revealing a new part of the arena. So it's just constantly changing. He keeps adding new attacks too. But one thing stays the same. You gotta reflect his hands back into his face. And that to me makes it a floating hand boss. And by the end, it's just utter chaos. The music hypes up, he's spamming everything at once, and he's dancing around having a that good time. It really is a test of all your skills, and the high difficulty puts it above the other games. I mean, in Splatoon 2, it's similar, but it's just in a big open arena and it lacks the chaotic aspect. And really, compared to the first game, it's just kinda lame. Still, it has this cool grinding section at the end which is very hype and his hands are golden now so um i'll give him a few points for that and in splatoon 3 it's more of a tutorial at the start of the game this time but hey it's got a cool mad max thing going on here and his design's pretty good but regardless which fight he thinks the best one thing is consistent across all of them it um has hands number four is a rudy the clown right Imagine a game where you can't die. You feel safe knowing that no matter what happens, it's just a minor inconvenience at best. Then you make it to the end of Warrior Land 3, and the final boss just dead ass kills you. The last two games have lured you into a full sense of security, and then it just throws that back into your face. One grab is all it takes, and then you're dead. They even made a game over screen just for this boss. Now that is how you immediately elevate this to top tier stuff. It's just a shame we never got to see this guy again. Well, besides Dr. Mario 64 for some reason, which I'm still not really sure what that's all about, to be honest. Number three is Andros. 
And Joss, probably the first floating and boss for a lot of people. I mean, he's in space for Pete's sake. You can't get any more floating than that. And he's had a lot of fights. Some iconic, some less so. And he's even spawned a few cheap imitations. But there's one fight which I put above the rest. And it might surprise you, but it's his fight from Star Fox Zero. Now, I hear you, bad controls, blah blah blah, we you flop, blah blah, crap game, etc, etc. And to that, I have two words. Skill issue. That's right. One day, Star Fox Zero will get the recognition it deserves, damn it. But the fight itself, and first up, his design is a cool combination of his original SNES design and the N64 design. And I love it. And the boss is just incredibly well designed in general, really. First, you're flying outside, dodging these giant lasers. Then, you break into the shield, only for him to transform and grow glorious hands. Look at how HD they look. Oh, they're so shiny. And they've really got to be fast to deflect these attacks. Then, he drags you in with his beam, and you've got to transform and fly off. And before you know it, you're shooting lasers and spinning around. And then, he starts vomiting these things at you. That's what happens when your diet consists mostly of eating bleeding tiles. Remember kids, eat your greens. And stop watching this video, because it's not really appropriate for kids. But um, perhaps the thing that really elevates it is the fact that he's just full on shit talking you the entire time. I mean, let's just listen to some of this shit. Just like your father. Bringing up your dead dad. That was pretty low. And then there's stuff like this. A fox. Being ordered from a dog. Is that really how you want to live your life, boy? Mm -hmm. Bro, I think Anjos might be racist towards dogs or something. But with hands that cool, I'm finding it hard to disagree. Fuck the dogs, am I right? Well, no, no, not literally, you fucking pervert. Stop, stop that. Mm, number two is Master Hand and Crazy Hand. All right, everyone knows about these guys. Or, um, girls, uh, hands? Oh, I don't really know. It's Master Hand, and it's been in every Smash Bros game. And every time, they keep adding new moves. Out of all the hand-related bosses, this guy's got to have the most robust moveset I think possible. If you can think of a hand-related attack, it was probably here. I mean, the footage speaks for itself. It's just an endless barrage of hand-related attacks. And to top it off, Crazy Hand shows up too. And they live up to their name. Bro is twitching. I mean, what even is this attack? I think he's having a seizure over here. I feel like I should call an ambulance or something. And what's cool is, these guys show up in Kirby games too. It's all connected. And the cherry on top is, you can actually play as Master Hand in Smash Ultimate, but only once, because you can never replay that moment ever again. So, um, treasure it whilst you can, just like life. But alas, there's only one hand boss left, and what could be better than Master Hand? I mean, seriously now. But before we find out, let us have a moment of silence for the hands that didn't quite make it. Roll the montage. Ah, fuck it. You're not here to see a bunch of losers. You're here to see the best hand boss of all time. And here it is. And number one is Donkey Kong. Now, I could be wrong here, but I think this is the first floating hand boss ever. I think this is the one that started it all. The origin of the floating hand boss. I mean, it might be. And the boss itself, and like all good bosses, it really tests all your skills, and it pushes Mario's moveset to the limit. The music is hype, the boss is tough, and one mistake is instant death. And just when you think you've won, 
It's a fake out and he comes back with even more deadly attacks. Twice no less. He has no chill. Seriously, it's a gauntlet. which only makes the final blow all the more satisfying. Look at his goofy ass face. Let's all point and laugh at his goofy ass face. I mean, come on now. Don't be shy. I'll pause the video just for you. Okay, I think that's enough. You can stop now. Now, Mario vs Donkey Kong has a similar final boss, but eh, it's not as good. I mean, Donkey Kong and a robot? What kind of off-brand bootleg shit is that? And it's a lot easier too, and he just has less attacks. It's just all around not nearly as good. But the DK94 version, it's the genesis of the hand boss, the granddaddy, and for that, it is number one. Even if it turns out it wasn't the first one or something, and this pick is probably based solely on nostalgia anyway, but you know, it's a list about floating hand bosses. Don't take it that seriously. Anyway, all this talk about hands has given me a good idea. Introducing the new and improved Lonely Goomba. Pretty cool, right? Now I can finally hold my Game Boy like a real person. Just, um, one moment, please. Almost, almost, just a little bit more and uh... Ah, oh, fuck. And the Goomba of the week is Joshi the Sobble. Hold up, what are you doing out of your Pokeball? I told you to stay in there for the rest of your life. Go on, back in you go. I mean, I, the absolute nerve of some people, I'm telling you. 